Namaste everyone. Can you all hear me today? Thank you so much for having me here. This is Divya Miglani, a product of my mother and my father, brought up in a very humble background with my siblings, two older brothers. And we were just taught one thing, do what you want to do in life, just keep your deeds clean. Mind, speech, action, never hurt anyone. That's it. And go on whatever you want to do in life. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank them, you all, for having me here today. I know I was just uh, looking at this video and uh, more interestingly, people call me a race car driver than a revenue strategist. Boring corporate life, is it? But it's been an interesting life. It's been a beautiful journey, balancing the both. I often come across this statement when they say, how did you even get to becoming a race car driver, for God's sake? Actually, let me correct this. They call me, how did you even get to becoming a woman race car driver? It's like, hi, I'm Divya Miglani. No, it's like, hi, I'm woman Divya Miglani. <laughs> no complaints about being a woman, but it took a lot of time. I had to carry this tag along with me to become a woman race car driver. I hope the title upstairs stays what? Race car driver? Not a woman race car driver. So thank you so much, all of you, to acknowledge me for this industry, for the people, for the peers, for the competitors, for the organizers, to give me a chance to drive on the track, on the circuits, to show you my metal, how, how I can drive, what I can do. And it's not a planned thing that I had come here with. I had literally had no idea. As a kid, growing up days in my school, my colleges, I used to utter these three golden words. What are you going to do when you grow up? I don't know. Wow. You have no idea what you want to do in life, what you want to grow up to, under that whole pressure of to tell them, to define myself, to have a future, have a plan. I would say another three golden words. I'll figure out. I'm sharing this right in the beginning of the TED Talk because it's actually been my foundation. I have never kept myself under the pressure that I need to know everything right now. That I need to understand, I need to define myself, I need to put myself in a box. I have been very open in life, I've been very available, present in the present moment, and wherever the opportunities came, I just dived in it. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it did not work. So many falls, so many failures. Of course, I'm going to take you for a little drive with me here today. Like I said, everything comes to an end. So will this TEDx talk be. So I want you all till then to be with me here for these number of minutes so that I could literally take you for a crazy drive here. I won't make it a little boring, don't worry. It won't be very inspirational or anything. I'm going to be very real. My mom is the best today. She asked me, so darling, what are you going to talk about in your TEDx talk today? I don't know. <laughs> She's like, oh my God, okay, yeah, 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 you'll figure out. I said, yeah. I know my story, what has been happening, my journey, my ups and downs. I don't want to make it as a script and come up to you and say, this is it. I want to be very real. The things that are going to come into my head right now on the stage are the things that are on my top of mind. There's so much to talk about. So becoming a race car driver, one thing led to the other. And I just kept moving on with it. I remember my, uh, my dad has been really an inspiration, has keeps inspiring me and keeps empowering me and tells me, uh, these two boys that you see, your brothers, you never think of yourself lesser than them. I said, thank you so much. Because being two older brothers, they would always bully me, of course, naturally, as a child. And my brothers would always be in their own zone. And my mom is like, yeah, but she's a girl. At somewhere down the line, I had a lot of equality at home, um, which gave me a lot of uh, liberty and opportunity to do what I wanted to do. But they just told me one thing, do whatever you want to do, just be devoted, commit to it. Don't do it and don't leave it. If you've taken up something, 
do it with your full heart mind and soul don't leave it in between and there's nothing that you cannot do thanks to my mentors they always empowered me and told me that you can achieve anything in life so just go for it there's a whole process that happens in the universe and just trust the process i said all right i'll figure out <laughs> so these wows these whole uh, unique things that we come across like i said when they said how did you even become a race car driver i discovered something about myself for someone it is a big deal that i'm a race car driver but it came so naturally for me that it's all right to explore being a race car driver so somewhere down the line i discovered about myself that it's not it's not a convention that i'm going for it's something i cannot see anything right now it's unknown unheard of unseen but i'm still jumping onto it so i understood that's my nature i like to experiment i like to explore so that really helped me in life going forward it doesn't matter what profession i am in right now but that was the guiding force for me starting with my career my you know my first job my media jobs i just heard about this motor sports events in india in delhi and i said i want to do it how are we going to do it i said i don't know we'll figure out let's do it let's see i love driving and if there's a event which takes me and which allows me to drive on the circuit why not according to me i was a very good driver i am a good driver but i wanted to check my skills i wanted to test my skills one fine day i got into a race car training program there was a race and two days race practice i sat in the car with my race suit i didn't even have a race suit it's not that i'm coming from a motor sports background right nobody in my family is a race car driver nobody has even heard of it so i sat in a race car helmet on borrowed my race suit baggy race suit looking like a whatever slide it in they told me to go on the race track gave me some instructions more than the driving i was spinning the car it was like one amusement park for me my god what is this my heart was thumping like whoosh am i doing the right thing shivering got into the pit lane how did it go my technicians asked i said yeah it was good but i'm spinning a lot so like don't worry you'll get through it my next session if i was spinning 15 times now i was spinning 10 times then five times but i was still spinning my heart was what was happening i thought i was a good driver what happened to me now so then there was a final race that happened the first ever race in down south i sat in the car driving 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 10 laps 10th lap i get into the pit lane whoa sweaty all sweaty but everything was blur when i was driving i got out my second race after a few minutes i spun i spun on my ninth lap i but still i finished the race and i covered the 10th lap i got off i see a notice after a few minutes i see a notice on the board which said that uh, uh they were to see the organizers to meet the organizers after this like a report card parent teacher meeting nahi hota you want to the parents are calling you i went inside the organizer said uh, you're a bit slow and the driver is protesting that you're blocking his way and because of that he is getting slower i said okay i'm so sorry am i out of the race what am i supposed to say like, no this is just a warning and you have to be a little careful and you have to be on the lines i said all right i will do it so scared i went inside It was another round i went to the washroom i saw the mirror i started crying <laughs> i started crying oh my god what am i doing i'm blocking i'm slow i'm supposed to be racing somebody saying i'm slow what is this am i in the wrong profession what am i doing am i even supposed to be doing this a lot of doubts a lot of doubts i cried 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 i don't know if i'm supposed to say all this in a dead text talk no driver will say i was slow but well that's my reality i pushed myself pat it on my back you have chosen this you like driving you're going to be here you want to learn so take all these criticisms as your feedback and don't cry again i talked to myself and i came on the race track did my rounds I was all right no protest no nothing no notices and towards the end of the race they give me a notice saying that 
the only women doing this in this year. Fantastic, and we encourage you to come again and again. I was like, whoa, that was a hard one. There was like a, such a suspense. I thought I'll DNF. DNF is did not finish the race. But no, nothing happened. So what was this? Nothing. It was not even the external, it was my internal which was talking to me. The get out of this, get out of it, get out of it. I said, no, I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay. So I stayed on. And then, <laughs> parallel to my racing and rallying career, of course, I was doing these corporate jobs. My first job was Times of India in media. And I told my uh, boss that I was doing all of this. And he's like, we will sponsor you. I said, really? They sponsored me. They supported me. They gave me chuttis. They gave me holidays for this. He's like, we're really proud of you. I said, fantastic. Thank you so much. What can I do to do? He's like, you're already doing such a great job. Wow. So I'm, suddenly I'm meeting people. The minute I've crossed my fear, the minute I've crossed my insecurities, my doubts about myself, I'm just meeting people day in, day out who are ready to support me. It's like magical. It's like, wow, what's happening here? One after the other. Times of India sponsored me. I did that race. I got into rallies. I, got, I did Raid the Hillam, Himalayan rally. A lot of things. Now I was overtaking it also on the racetrack. I was making records. Now what is happening here? Suddenly, that it was unlaid for me. So it became my comfort zone. So what I thought was my uncomfortable subject became my comfort zone. I started learning. I started learning. My mom had always said that. Never do it at the cost of your career, your studies, or your life. I gave her that promise. And I said, I will never do that. I promise you that. You allow me to do this, I will never do it. So I was doing this parallel careers. I like the introduction they gave it for me. What is Divya? What is Divya? Yes, that's exactly what happens when I go for interviews sometimes. Dual professions? She's a race car driver or she's a revenue strategist. What is she, man? What are you? What do you want to do in life? So what is it with dual professions? Is it like you're not focused in life? Or is it there's something more to it? Media and motorsports? Two different worlds altogether? Extreme worlds altogether? But I realized how Every time I would do one, the other would get more productivity. When I'm in a corporate job, I'm doing this. I'm like thoroughly with it the whole entire week. And thankfully, the races, the rallies are happening more on the weekends. On the weekends, I'm getting fully charged and getting back to my corporate world. So it really worked for me. I met a few people who thought I was not serious. I said, sir, I'm damn serious. In fact, I'm more serious because I'm actually learning in my motorsports. I'm earning in my corporate life. What else am I supposed to do? Then slowly and gradually, people started recognizing me. I was working with Star TV, and I wanted some holidays. And uh, my head of department were skeptical of giving me one week or 10 days holidays. I reached out and I requested. They covered me in their Hong Kong magazine of Star TV that Divya Miglani is our employee and is a race car driver. And that was a time when everybody kind of supported me. They started, they acknowledged me. They put it up, put me up at a pedestal that we have really noticed her. We have really acknowledged her. So what is happening? Why I'm sharing this with all of you at a TEDx talk is that once we show our conviction, the entire world will adjust. There's nobody. There's nobody who's coming here to become a barrier. It's us who we make it as a barrier for ourselves. And I'm talking this about my experience, through my experience. If I had to stop then and there, I would have stopped. But it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Because the love, our love was, what do you call that, true love. We were inseparable. I said, whatever I want to do, but I want to be in touch with motorsports for sure. What is happening, basically? We, there are so many times that when we don't do well, what is happening to us? Our morale goes down. We get so tired. But this tiring is good because it actually helps us push us more. I chose a career, motorsports career, where I knew I may or may not be number one ever. I don't know, but I'll figure out. I'm still learning at it and I'm still training at that. The idea is I'm doing what I love to do. When I drive, it's me and the car. I'm just right there. Everything goes blur. So that's my story of driving. Being a revenue strategist, 
all the media companies that i've worked with have always supported me have always supported me revenue strategy is basically what you program you do the content where you get monies on board for the broadcasting programs so that helped me actually to get sponsorship for my motorsports and my motorsports contacts contacts helped me to get the corporate revenues in place so what my mom said never do it at the cost of your career profession or whatever that was really working so i also could understand how parents are right from their perspective in whatever thing they're doing at least they're allowing me to do it but i have to be balanced enough to make sure that this works for me if this is if this doesn't work for me then nobody is supposed to be blamed only me nobody else so that became completely out of those dual professions suddenly they i had i was into multiple professions i was asked to do this uh, test reviews cars anchor shows so many things i was like why not why just because i thought i didn't get back when i was protested that she's slow i was slow obviously they are going to protest but then i worked on myself and i keep working on myself thanks to the federation of motorsports again two days two years back they put me on the board as to represent women in motorsports for the four wheeler racing commission so what we are trying to do is we promote more and more women so suddenly that whole pandora of what i was doing learning earning now came returning so returning to the through the federation of board so it's been a beautiful journey and as i said everything comes to an end so does this tedox talk going to come to an end but it's been a fabulous experience just sharing a little short drive this was maybe we will go for a longer drive next time but uh, all i want to say is maybe all just keep embracing the change whatever comes in our lives and never be fearful at at any point of time everything will be figured out we don't really have to stop anywhere just keep throttling this is what i have done in my life and i thank you all for patiently listening to me i hope i haven't bored you enough thank you so much and i wish you all the very best